I speak to you this morning in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I don't know how to preach a farewell sermon, but Padre says it's customary, which means it's required of me. <laughs> so here I am. I've been preaching for 20 years. I know I look young, but I've been preaching for 20 years, and I've taught preaching for the last five years. Two of my students are here this morning, former students. But you, you've stumped me, St. Cyprian's. You've stumped me. I've written three full sermons for today. The first was a very thoughtful reflection on the life of the prophet Elijah. The second was a rousing sermon on rage and peacemaking from the gospel reading, but I realized that neither of these sermons were for you. They were for me. I wanted to leave you with something prophetic, so I went to the Old Testament, but the words didn't come out right. I wanted to leave you with something challenging, so I went to the gospel message, but there was nothing of the good news in the challenge. And this third sermon, well, it's ended up more like an epistle to the church at Oxford, or perhaps more accurately, a confession. You've stumped me, St. Cyprian's, because unlike Jesus in today's gospel lesson, I don't know how to prepare myself to leave the people that I love. But I do know something of the art of preaching. And the first rule of preaching is one that el any elementary school teacher can tell you. It's that you never begin the sermon with the word I. So since I've already flunked this one, <laughs> that takes a little of the pressure off. And now that that's been said, I feel free to tell you that I have been thinking of you all throughout these last few weeks. In some ways, as a lover thinks about the one whom she loves. Perhaps that's why I'm trying to tell you in a roundabout way that I love you, St. Cyprian's. I love your smiles. I love your high fives and your hugs, all of which happen at the passing of the peace, by the way. And I love the way you move, the way you swing your hips in worship, yes, but also the way you move out of the pews and into the city of Oxford where you teach children to read and to play ancestral drums. And then there's the way you move out into Granville County, where many of you work and live and care for one another, and in so doing, live out your baptismal call to be priests of Christ wherever you are and to whomever you meet. And then the way you move in North Carolina as a welcoming congregation who does not stand for racism or sexism or ageism or homophobia, but when Jesus did when he said, let the children come to me. St. Cyprian's, all of my delight is in you this morning. As the psalmist says, my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. Whenever someone asks me what church I attend, my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices in you, in who you are and in who you have shaped me to be. All of those evenings where we sat around the table in the Stanley Center, wrestling with God and wrestling with our own vices and virtues. You called me teacher, but you, you were teaching me, St. Cyprian's. You were teaching me how to be a priest, how to listen, how to encourage, how to uplift, how to speak the truth, and how to do it all in love and with a lot of food. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I remember when we were young lovers, you and I, we were both still growing into who we were called to be. It was a few years ago now, but I still remember the day I returned to you from an internship at another church. Someone I was thinking of dating, but they didn't have your charm. <laughs> when I came back, I expected you to be the same black church that I had fallen in love with. 
but instead I found you speaking a new language, one that I did not understand. And I've always prided myself on my ability to write and to speak and to communicate with clarity and precision, but I could barely say hello in Spanish without the word coming out wrong. And so I was afraid that you and I could no longer be together, that we had grown apart, that we were so different now that we wouldn't connect like we used to. But the words of the desert monk, Father Antony, rooted themselves in my heart. What shall I do in order to please God? <coughs> Wherever you are, stay there and do not move away in a hurry, he said. And so I stayed. And little by little, I learned that deep down, you and I were still very much alike. We did not need many words to convey our humanity to one another. And now, as any couple who grows older together will admit, when I look in the mirror, I see you in me and me in you. Over time, we grew into one another again, like branches grafted into a healthy vine. We drew life from one another, and the fruits of the Spirit burst forth in us. Love bloomed, joy erupted, peace fell. Patience expanded and kindness came easy. Goodness was learned, faithfulness known, gentleness received, and discipline offered as a promise in support of one another. I've always wanted to be as disciplined as a monk, but instead God called me to the priesthood. I am in love with you, St. Cyprian's. Because you are the gift of God to me, you have been my monastery. You have trained me to pray, and you have trained me to work. You've trained me to wait and to trust, to care and to hope, to receive and to give. You have shown me how to follow Jesus, how to put my hand to the plow and not look back. And the day has come where our journeys separate. It will be hard not to have your beautiful faces to gaze into each week. But back to back, following Jesus, that's how we roll in the kingdom of God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I will remember you. I will remember all that you have taught me. And I hope you re will remember just how much I love you. For no matter where you go, and no matter where I am, we are following Jesus together. And whenever we find ourselves traveling in opposite directions, it means that we're always at each other's back. Amen. Amen. Amen.